I am Ruth Ann Thorne. I'm a tribal member here at Rincon Band of Luceno Indians. And today I'm gonna to bring you a special episode of Art of the City, which you'll see about how these tribes are supporting artists within Indian country and how they're bringing the traditions of the tribe into the public eye through art and culture. So join me for Art of the City, Indian Country. Driving on to my native land is an amazing experience every time because it makes me think about 14,000 years documented my people lived here. And today I'm really excited to be able to meet with my tribal chairman, Chairman Bo Mazzetti of the Rincon Band of Luceno Indians, and hear how we are preserving our art and culture through the casino, through the projects that we're involved in, and most importantly, our ability to now preserve that culture for the next generation. What is the primary role of being the chairman of a tribe? Well, if, under federal law, if you use federal law, which we go by, obviously, uh, the chairman of each tribe in the state of California is equivalent to or equal to the governor of the state of California. The vice chair is equal to the lieutenant governor of the state of California. Same uh, recognition under federal law. Uh, then the council basically are, are the assembly and senate uh, versions, a lot smaller. So is that where they get the term Indian country because it is in fact its <clears throat> own governmental system? under this land that's designated? Theoretically, all of California is Indian country. You know. True. <laughs> but when you get into the legal status and legal standings, then you get into the fact that uh, a tribe is a sovereign, what they call a, a political sovereign within the United States. We also have to generate businesses and oversee business development. The land actually is held in trust. In other words, the ownership will rest with the United States government. We don't have land. For example, you cannot go get a loan and then maybe use the land as collateral. Okay. So that's always been on reservations throughout the nation. That's why it's been hard to start businesses, even for individuals, because you have no collateral. You can't put the land up uh, uh, as, as collateral, for example, for a portion of the land even. So when you were a kid, there weren't any businesses here? No, no. There so, were dinosaurs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> probably, no, no. probably some dinosaur yeah, bones yeah, anyway, yeah. for sure, yeah. right? But, uh, no, but, it was totally different. So totally what different. was it like? Give us a, a picture. When you and my dad, yep. when you guys were growing up, what did it look like as far as, you know, just your early memories, but also what was the um, economic structure like here? Well, everybody pretty much farmed because that's the only way to generate any income here. But other than that, there was no business here. Uh, obviously, uh, you learned how to do everything yourself. What about the culture? Do you rem were, were we practicing things? I know my great-grandfather you know, had talked to me about the burning yeah. of the clothes and various things, but did, did you experience growing up with we, the language we, or we, any? We, well, we had it, but see, you gotta remember, a lot of the folks back then, the older folks, didn't want you to speak the language. They thought, okay, you got to assimilate. Uh, my grandmother's one thought you should, you know, you don't really need to know it uh, because, you know, it's not an Indian world anymore. It's a white world, so to speak. Right. So they didn't encourage it. It slipped out. They spoke the language from time to time. But right. then you also got to remember that, like my parent, my dad, and, and those that went to Sherman Indian High School, if you spoke the language, they would beat you, literally beat you. Right. So that was kind of beat out of a lot of, like my dad's age group. Uh, so it wasn't spoke a lot. Uh, we've since brought the language back, brought back more of the culture, more mm -hmm. of the traditions. Um, that's what I'm proud of, seeing those restored, introducing them to our younger, newer uh, tribal members. Right. Uh, and that's an ongoing thing. Yeah, right. I mean, you, you've got to put it out there and gradually train our own people. It is survival of the culture, it's survival of the arts, mm -hmm. you know. Because the arts display uh, um, the history. Don't forget the past, you know, bring it right. forward with you. Uh, and teach our own people have to be taught this stuff. And because we have a lot of folks that are, don't know a lot of it, mm -hmm. which is our fault then. We need to uh, start educating our own folks, which we're doing, as, as I mm -hmm. said. 
but I think one of the, the biggest things for me is you, the way I was taught. You got a certain period of time, you get to be leader. And I say get to be, because that's up to the people. But then what you do is set it for the next generation, make it sure it's better, get things in place, just like those before me you know, did. And you share it. You share the tradition, you share the culture, you share the art, you share the, the goal. And it's for the tribe, not individuals. I may be chairman, but I'm there for the tribe, not there for me. You know, and that's what we got to keep in mind. What are you there for? And again, teaching, making the next generation better. That's what it's all about. If you're doing a good job, I do. heading over to the casino where I will meet with our vice chairwoman Tishmal Turner. Tishmal grew up on the reservation so she is very connected with the art and culture here. She's also responsible for the sculpture project that is allowing native artists to be shown here in our casino and it allows us to share our culture of who we are as Luceno people with the public. I look at around our reservation and I look at our government center and I look at you know things that I have experienced growing up here on the reservation and art has always been part of our culture right. but it's also a way for us to be able to share that with um, our tribal members and our community um, you know when I look and it, you see these uh, art displays that are a reflection of our ancestors, but they're contemporary, and it's also going to leave and tell a story about our people yes. for future generations. Mm -hmm. So how did this piece come about? This is um, a woman, and those are baskets up there, and it's um, the Milky Way, and the significance in that is that we believe in our stories that each when person passes into their next stage of their journey that they're in the stars in the Milky Way it also you know this is not just a traditional casino it, you know it's looking did not reflect our native culture or our presence but it's also important to share that with people that are coming out here to learn a little bit more about what's important to the Luceno people would you say that it gives people a sense of pride? It does. You know, you start feeling a sense of belonging and other people start having a better understanding of uh, who you are as a people. It takes a lot to create a bronze sculpture, not only in the talent, but it's also financially mm -hmm. a big investment. When you create a bronze sculpture like this, it's gonna be here forever. Right, and the so. tribe made a commitment to um, work with artists and produce one piece of art a year for five years okay. to put throughout the casino property. You know, sometimes things are hard to talk about or difficult to talk about, and they can be shared through art. Yes. And um, I really like that. Within any Native tribe, we end up all being related and we are a family. And within that family, you have certain people that stand out because they're so passionate about culture and language. And Lori Gonzalez, who is one of our council women, is definitely been one that has spearheaded many initiatives, including our museum. She has such a passion for what it means to be a Luceno woman, and I love listening to her stories. How did that passion start for the arts and um, your love for not only art, but making sure that people are aware of the history here? I started becoming aware of that where was our representation? Right. Aside from beadwork and buckskin, I know that we're artistic people within my family, your family, right. and we're, we're yeah. our families commingled. Where was all of that? Except at a trading post. And seeing the artifacts, the things from our past that were so artistically made, and even the stories, because to me, you know, a story is something you paint with words. That's art right. too. Yes. And I thought, we need to, we need to expose this. We need to bring this to the forefront. We are, 
we need for everyone to see this because it's amazing. So that's where my passion came from. Our people need to know from us what their culture is, not from a school book or a professor cross country who read something and wrote a paper. We want to tell our own story. Well, how do you tell your story? You bring the things that the ancestors had, that they created, the baskets, art, the, the petroglyphs, mm -hmm. art, the stories, again, art, mm -hmm. all this into one room and say, this is us. The most important part of that is being able to share our identity and to learn it for ourselves. What are we famous for? Baskets. So we have a basket weaver. And then the dignified man right there was taken from a photograph of an actual Rincon ancestor. So they greet you. You come in the door and there's that feeling of con continuity. From then to now, we're still here. We're thriving. We're, we're, we're not just existing. Right. We're really living now, you know, to the fullest. I love looking at them. I love seeing those faces and saying that was then, this is now, we're still going strong. Art has always been an important part of what it means to be Native American. But as you can see here, the tribes have not forgotten that. You can see that the tribes that have been shown here today, although very prosperous, are pouring back into art and culture in such a unique way. And I think that the significance of art really shows that we're still here as a people. We still remain, our stories are still being told, and it really gives everybody an opportunity to understand what it means for us as Native Americans to be progressive within the culture that we're living in today. So I hope you enjoyed Art of the City, Indian Country, and I hope you join us again.